Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Game number two here over this best of five series between Auburn and North Carolina State. Game one taken by Auburn. I'm going to be your play-by-play -play color or play-by-play -play commentator again. So used to being a color. Joined by Radiant this time around. How are you, buddy? I'm uh, not bad. Feeling a little sick right now. I apologize. My voice comes off and you like that, guys. I'm trying to you know, get over some cold. Uh, but I am BP Radiant here to join out to be a color casting for this game here. Really excited after watching game one. Uh, you know, North Carolina having a little bit to prove here. I think they can come back, but it's really going to have to come in here with these bands. Uh, we do see some power picks going out here with that Skarner band and some GP. Uh, do you see the Cos band? So it does seem like their plan is to potentially keep Kark off some of these carry junglers. Do you think we'll see a Rangar band as well, or do you think that wasn't impactful enough to kind of come in that last game? Kark certainly had a good showing with it, but I think Pop Tart and Bubba Hotep were the real MVPs of that last game just popping off in a few of those fights with the blade collars, pulling in the feathers through a number of people. Swain taken off the table as well, and Thresh denied from Commissioner. I'm really interested to kind of see if Bubba Hotep does get that Zaya, or if they're going to be first picking it away, uh, as he did look extremely strong and really pulled a tempo advantage away from uh, North Carolina with that you know, gank going bot lane and being able to turn around so many plays uh, with well-timed Zaya and blade collar. Uh, I don't see them letting him have this. Yeah, and the Kaisa pick from Robert Cern really didn't seem that effective, especially with the build he was going. Got that um, Gwinzu's and went into a Runans after that, so he was really low damage. Yeah, I like to see more people go. Uh, I mean, the build right now is like Essence Reaver into Death Stance, I think is the one I've seen as well, uh, which allows you to get that Q off of like two items and then go into, you know, some more damage that way. And the Kaisa coming in first pick, though, uh, we should see if he goes the same build, if he's going to try to change it up. Uh, yeah. We'll kind of see here. The but two basically... sort of meta ones I've seen uh, are the Essence Reaver one as well, as you were talking about, and then the other is Death Stance first, and you get a Nashor's Tooth and Gwinzu's. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, because the uh, Gwinzu's and Death Stance do give you the Q upgrade. Yes. Very early on. Okay, so they do actually pick the Caitlyn here. They decide not to take the uh, Zaya, maybe looking for a stronger lane phase into this Kaisa. Um, well, certainly will be with that additional range on the Caitlyn. Interested to pick up here. I think they could look to probably pick up a, what support they're looking for. Uh, I haven't got to look too much in the champ pools, but we'll Morgana be interested available. And they are going to go with the power lane of Morgana Caitlyn. Uh, for those of you who don't know, honestly, just getting trapped into binding or binding in a trap, it's such a strong damage and high poke lane with that black uh, soil, like tormented soil uh, and cape poke coming out there. I think it'll be really hard for Kaisa with such low range to really do anything in this lane. Uh, she can have a lot of trouble farming, and I expect to see probably like a fairly large CS advantage coming in for Bubba Hoptep and Commissioner. And Braum getting picked up again for Twitch TV Cyber. Had an all right performance on it the last time around, but the bottom lane wasn't really able to impact the map enough. You can really see with this there, the Braum pickup that they're just trying to survive this lane. Uh, they won't have a lot of kill pressure on, especially with that Black Shield coming in. Uh, Zach would be a pretty good pickup here, though. Does allow a little bit more threat onto this Caitlyn, though. Uh, even with the Black Shield, does have enough, you know, magic damage coming out that he may be able to proc, proc early level Black Shields uh, with the E and then still be able to get the Q off. But I'm not fully sold right now, uh, as we'll see the Cassiopeia coming out for Pop-Tart again. I mean, you were talking about yourself, a very strong pick for him. And he went so aggressive, even diving between tier one and next, or tier one and inhibitor turret, and getting out alive uh, in basically like what was close to being a 1v4 scenario. Yeah, and a lot of the other fantastic things he was doing was his roaming. He was always making it to the important plays at just the right time to get in there with a petrifying gaze, lock people up, lay a miasma down, and put the damage onto him. I mean, do you see the Rengar and Quirky bands coming out there right now? Do you showing that they want Dextamus on something a little less, you know, comfortable? And we do know that Quirky is what a lot of people do like to pick into this Cassiopeia matchup. Scion taken away as well from Whoppers. Was able to lane pretty nicely into I'm just joshing with that last time around. Interesting to see if they decide to ban out the Ornn. Rek'Sai instead, a very interesting pick. Uh, a lot of people don't really consider Rek'Sai to be a strong pick jungler right now. Uh, so I'm yeah. interested to kind of see if Kark has, you know, performed well in that in the past or not, but... They took away Kane last time from Kark, so that's available this time. We'll have to see if he goes for that. Ooh, J4. 
I do actually like this for their comp. If they can manage to go somebody else who has like a little bit of an AoE CC, uh, the Ornn is certainly available in the top lane if they can get a good matchup for it. Um, this will allow so much just like zone control. Uh, Miasma, Jarvan, and Ult is just such a hard CC tool to get away from. So I'm excited to see uh, that they're enabling Pop-Tart to you know, carry so much harder this game. Putting a lot of trust in him and, I'm, and Bubba Hotep to do just so much damage. Yeah, the Velka is picked on the other side for Dexamus, however, not necessarily a popular pick, but should be able to match up into the Cassiopeia pretty nicely. Early game, I do see him having some problems, as if he does get land, like Cassiopeia does manage to land a Q, I think Velka is just going to get run down for at least a large portion of his health bar. Um, and should kind of see if he'll be able to farm effectively with his W, uh, or get some Q poke off to kind of keep Cassiopeia from going aggro. But with the way the pop Tart was playing in the last game, uh, even though he was playing on the Corky to have that escape, he still almost got ran down every time with that ghost. Uh, it'd be very interesting to kind of see if Dexmas can can really shine on this pick. Yeah, and the Nar and Chogath locked in for top lane. I actually really like the pickup of Chogath there. Sort of the last um, hyper tank that was left up on the table. I do like it. I think I may have liked to see Orn again. I think that he did have some pretty good Orn ults as well. Uh, but maybe not quite as good of a matchup in an R. Uh, but I'd be interested to see if they do that. They are going full in on this Jarvan ult. Uh, as you can see, Jarvan's most likely going to be the main engage. But with so much just like slight AoE damage coming out there with the Tormented Soil, with the Cho'Gath Rupture, uh, I do think like anybody who gets stuck in this Jarvan Cataclysm is just going to be instantly popped. Yeah, the Caitlyn Morgana bottom lane as well. You can't help but feel like they're going to get some advantages early just so strong and especially into kaisu who has that weak laning phase it's gonna be a rough one for ncs and i think if the only saving grace thing is if robert cern does end up going that death stance build i think he's gonna have just enough passive damage to deal with this chogath and this jarvan coming at them as well as having enough burst damage with the high ad to deal with this caitlin or cassiopeia because you know they're gonna try to single out in these fights as they have been last game I really think that right now, just looking at this, I think that Auburn is just trying to flex that they have a deep champ pool uh, because they had the power picks available to them that won them that last game, and they decided to all pick something else uh, outside of, you know, Kark, who got banned on his last champion, and Pop-Tart decided to stay with Cassiopeia. I almost think the Caitlyn Morgana is a little bit more dominant for them than a, the Zaya Lulu they had last time. Although Bubba Hotep had a fantastic showing on it, they weren't able to dominate the laning phase like you can with this. So we're going to have to see if they're going to lay the hurt down in this early game. Kark as well on J4, so he's going to be able to make a little bit more of an impact as well in this early game rather than the Rengar. Yeah, and I, I think that, honestly, if we're going to see anything, it's probably going to be onto this Nar uh, to try to negate some of that threat. So I would be, I think that we'll see Penguin and Kark up in the top lane here, trying to either get the Nar ahead or put him behind, as Cho'Gath will have a little bit of a weaker lane phase early. He does get healing off his passive, but uh, so long as Nar can you know, stay out of ruptures, it's going to be very hard for Cho'Gath to really get onto him to do any kind of trading. Yeah, Zach as well, four pluck and penguin. That's one we'll have to keep track of. Zach, always an interesting pick in the jungle. He come from such weird angles for his ganks. So Pop-Tart and Bubba Hotep going to have to be on their toes. Yeah, I think about the time that Zach is going to hit, uh, I believe it's level 9, uh, is when we're going to be seeing the most you know, threat range out of him uh, as well. And I think that for him, Pop-Tart, and I'm just joshing her, his main targets he's able to go for, as again, Commissioner being able to black shield his primary target is going to be a large you know, determining factor on whether or not he can actually gank this bot win. Yeah, Commissioner going to have to be on point with those. Mid lane as well, the Velkaz versus Cassiopeia. We did touch on it, but I think this lane can easily be affected by the junglers as well. One of those two champions gets a lead, they're able to snowball it pretty easily. I do actually kind of like it. Now, looking into the Cho'Gath pick, I think the Velkaz uh, is actually pretty strong to that as well, especially when Cho'Gath doesn't have Flash. Uh, it's going to be very hard for him to actually walk up into uh, NC State with Velkaz being able to slow him, knock him back, Braum slows. I think they have a lot of options here to kite out at least some of the tank damage coming in. Uh, be interesting to kind of see if they'll be able to do that. As well as we do know that, you know, looking here at the tank lineup, 
it's going to be very hard. Cho'Gath will get a lot tankier in the late game, especially once he does get that stone plate, have a lot of threat damage onto popping the Zac or the Snar uh, with that true damage from his feast. Fortunately, the Velkaz and the Kaisa both have a little bit of that HP percentage damage. So we'll have to see if they can stay relevant going through this laning phase to make it into that late game and unlock their full potential. All right. It looks like we're actually starting to load into the game here right now. Uh, so right now, it's kind of coming out here. I think a big part of this is like we are playing in the grand finals right now, and I think we'll be interesting to see if NC State can manage to keep the mentality it takes after a defeat like that. Uh, it was a fairly quick game uh, and fairly decisive ending by Auburn. Uh, so I think it's going to take a lot here for NC State to, to kind of keep that mentality and keep themselves in check so that they can come back in this game. Yeah, it's always difficult to do that in a best of series as you do have sort of that mental fortitude game. And if this game starts going sideways, maybe you start playing a little bit worse just simply because you're already under pressure from that first loss. <clears throat> yeah, and I, we're pausing at 10 seconds, I believe. Make sure we're all synced up. Okay, I'm still loading in just a little bit here, but oh, we'll, pause. Right. Ten, we'll pause at 10 seconds when we get there. Good idea then. Make sure we're all synced. Another right. interesting call is Kaisa actually decided to go press the attack. Um, yeah. Instead of fleet footwork. Robert did that last game as well, and I don't think I agree with it either. Oh. So I am at 40 seconds right now. We'll be rewinding that. Two 10 seconds. <laughs> kind of weird that I loaded in there. Um, What would you have rather seen instead of that press the attack for her? I really think fleet footwork is, is almost necessary, especially into how poke heavy this lane is going to be. Uh, and I am at 10 seconds, so just go ahead and let me know when you want to start it up. All right, and in three, two, one. Yeah, and I really think that, you know, overall, we we kind of have to see what they're just going to decide to do with here, though. But I think that, you know, Flea Fork is almost necessary, especially now how much poke you're going to be taking from Boba Hotep with your range discrepancy. Uh, and he does at least have the Doran Shield to get some of that off. Uh, maybe he's kind of focusing himself on getting that late game team fighting uh, with the press the attack, but I think Even sacrificing then, like Conqueror already... or a lethal tempo, I feel like would have been just as effective, if not better, in the late game, if that's what you're going for. That's true. Well, I don't know. I mean, it, maybe you're going with something for some gank heavy. You know, you want to go for an early gank or something, try to get a lead in the lane. But I think you're sacrificing too much of an already losing lane to yeah. go for that press the attack. Agreed. Everybody just sort of sitting in their own jungles, nothing crazy this time around, no invades. Jungle's right. gonna be starting opposing buffs as well. Would be interesting to kind of see what's gonna happen here. Um, that does make it look like Jarvan's gonna probably look to gank uh, this mid lane at the level 3 park if he can, or he could even go for a level 2 cheese gank, uh, which could be very effective against this Velkaz. Yeah, maybe even head up into that top lane. You get Cho'Gath ahead early. He becomes so unstoppable with the stacking health he gets. All right. And they are going to know uh, who leashed as Cho'Gath is going to get to lane late. But the bot lane on the side of NC, or on the side of Auburn, is going to go ahead and wait to uh, you know, try to at least fool that out a little bit here. Yeah, so not 100% sure where he started. Zach going buff to buff, however. Interesting to see as well that Nara went press the attack. Uh, you see a lot of Nars will, will primarily go for the uh, Airy instead. Uh, it's a little bit more consistent damage, but maybe he just feels that he can get the three autos off really consistently into this Shogath. Yeah, it's sort of like two camps. You see the summon Airy or the fleet footwork for some of the people who prefer the longer trades. But Whoppers going for that press the attack instead. The strange thing I want to point out here as well, too, is you don't know, uh, they actually, this means they did actually win both their matches last night in the top lane. Uh, if you saw the little flag right there on Whopper's side, uh, that's from the new Clash mode. 
uh, that will I come out. I figured it was from that, but I didn't know uh, what it was based on for the wins. Wasn't yeah, able to a... take part myself, unfortunately. Yeah, you get a, you get points for each win, uh, and then you'll get the flag after. It's kind of a cool mechanic. I've been I've been kind of enjoying it. Uh, I think it kind of also gives a lot of good practice. Ooh, good trade coming in there, though. Oh, Flock and Penguin might be found. Flag and Drag is going to miss. Flash away to get himself to safety. He's going to lose the big Raptor. I'm really? disappointed they're no longer chickens anymore. <laughs> well, you know. I'm still, still enjoying calling them chickens in general. The Wraiths were never my favorite looking ones. No, that's that's pretty old one as well. Some people might not even remember those at this point. Cool. Mana bar is being burned pretty heavily on on all sides, though. Uh, we do see I'm just joshing here, kind of showing a lot of that mana bar to be able to effectively farm out here. Is even in CS currently with one minion to spare there, so getting a little bit of an advantage. He tries to go in for any kind of trade here. Looks like he's playing it pretty safe here. Does not want to look to fight this Cho'Gath. Kark in the bottom lane, however, they don't know he's here, so he's just here for the counter gank. Zach does go in, and he's gonna get the flag and drag onto two. Zach extremely low. I'm gonna end up popping the passive. They're just gonna be trying to take care of him. Robert Cern trying to put the damage back on Kark. Extremely low. TP in from the Nar to save fucking Penguin. The trap actually stepped on by Cyber. He might be able to get the kill here. Both Robert Cern and Cyber extremely low. Binding does land after the flash. So they're going to be able to... Oh no, the heal and flash away. Clark and Penguin is going back in. Going to knock both of them back in. But the flag and drag from Clark going to keep them together. And Bubba Hotop so extremely low, but getting a double kill. Going down to what looked like 17 health, I believe, uh, on that kill. And now we kind of see as well the disadvantage. Oh, Pop-Tart kind of flashing in under the tower. Instant flash away from Robert Cern before the Miasma lands. A really good kind of predictive flash, uh, knowing what's going to happen there. He's going to drop the Miasma. But now, so many advantages were gained there from Auburn. Uh, you do see, of course, the double kill going down, but now the top lane doesn't have TP. That's going to allow Cho'Gath such a strong advantage in this lane. Uh, Ooh, as he's got taking a ton of damage in the mid lane. Deximus. Just laying the hurt down. Cho'Gath not choosing to use his TP. Uh, you know, we'll see if that's going to end up biting him later if he's going to look for another TP play in the bot lane. Uh, they do have that advantage coming in here for another three minutes. Uh, I'm really kind of excited to see what they decide to do with it. Yeah, and has picked up that Glacial Shroud first, so I'm not sure 100% what he's going to be building there. Kark. I'm gonna try and get away from Pluck and Ping, but will get pulled back in. Deximus is so low, has to end up healing. I'm just joshing as well. Knocking up Whoppers is gonna go in, and the Feast actually gets the kill onto him. Wow. A really good play, knowing your damage coming out here. Uh, not, not fully sure that Deximus uses a heal there, though. Uh, Pop-Tart, of course, had no summoners left and was no in range, and Kark had already used the Q, had no other ranged options to do damage. Uh, kind of felt more like a panic play. And again, we're talking about mentality here, and it seems like they're playing very scared right now. Uh, you know, kind of that feeling of playing not to lose rather than playing to win. As you can see, just proactively, uh, you know, Auburn's playing so much better right now. And they are in the driver's seat currently, just about a 2k gold lead now for them. At six minutes in, almost seven minutes now. Be interested to see if they try to take this bot lane advantage and take another early dragon. Uh, an early dragon is really good for this, uh, you know, Cassiopeia as well to help her build on that tier uh, with that mana base. Mana base. Ooh. Actually, might be able to get the kill onto Cyber here, just trying to put the damage onto him. Bubba Hotep will secure it. And Cyber is just eating every binding. The Commissioner is throwing at him. Yeah, really well played huge, on the Morgana. Huge amount of bindings landing onto him. Bubba Hotep not quite getting the traps in place every time, however, so he does take a little bit more damage than I think he's bargaining for in a lot of the trades. You can kind of see with how this lane is going right now. 12 CS lead in the mid lane off of a tier close start. That's, 
uh, really hard to kind of see on through the bell cause uh, as you're building this kind of damage you're not even able to like maintain a cs going even instantly going for the hard farm yeah and he's actually got a corrupting potion funnily enough i'm just josh and trading with whoppers here he's taking a lot on the back end however nar just smacking him down Sack in the mid lane, gonna look for the gank. Pop tart, no flash available. Does have the ghost, is gonna use the petrifying gaze, but he's gonna end up falling. That's what you were talking about earlier, with them being able to influence this bot lane so much, especially when the flash is down on either one of these laners, it's very easy for the jungler to just kind of come in uh, when they don't have vision of them. And you're also talking about Zach having creative gank passing right there. A very simple, very easy, you know, lane gank coming in, but not really an answer that Pop tart could have done for that. You know, short of backing up a little bit prior to him actually arriving there, no real way for him to avoid it. And even with that kill coming in for I'm just joshing, uh, we are seeing the Nar. Back in from the Nar, actually. I'm just joshing super low here. Is going to get the knock up and try and run away. The boomerang is going to connect, however, from Whoppers as he transforms back. And really showing the strength of that Nar on that phage, getting the trade kill back. Well. On Bubba Hotup does actually get away from the Let's Bounce. Just going to be trying to back up. Gar uh, sorry, Black Shield is going to keep him alive. Oh, the Killer Instinct back in. Going to heal out. Ace in the hole. Not going to connect. Pretty good play there. It does actually help to stabilize, and we all see that after this, it will be a fairly even in CS, though, even with the three kills onto the Caitlyn. You gotta feel pretty good about this here, Robert. Uh, you know, being down with the double, you know, deaths on the support, and still being even in CS with this kind of lane, uh, really well played on him as well to kind of be picking up all the CS that he can. Yeah, again, however, does seem like he's... Oh, Kark, nice deal on the blue buff. Might be caught out, got a flag and drag his way out. Miasma gonna block off Dextamus. Kark doesn't have the flag and drag available, but Ghost from Pop-Tart is going to get engaged on by the Zac, going to get knocked up, and Pop-Tart going to be dropping. Team not there to give him the support he needs. And Whoppers is going to be huge on these side lanes here in a bit, once he finally gets a chance to buy. As I'm just Josh here. Might be caught as well. He's going to use the Lifeform Disintegration Ray to secure that one. NC State really making some good, like, you know, choices here on what to do with the lane allocations, like when to roam. They didn't lose anything off that as the lanes are. Glacial Fisher in the bottom lane. Bubba Hotup extremely low. Exhaust's gonna come on to him. Binding is gonna land onto Cyber. The Soul Shackles as well onto two. Gonna pick up the one kill there onto Cyber. Commissioner. Oh, Clark is here. Ace in the hole gonna be on to him. Actually misses the flag and drag, but Cataclysm's anyways for the kill. And even after all that, we do still see a 2k gold lead on the side of Auburn here. Very interesting to kind of see what's going to happen here as this goes on. 4 to 6 all though. that pretty much is on the Kate and Morgana, however. That's a 3k gold lead just in the bottom lane. I think, honestly, if you're, you're looking forward to be anywhere, it'd be there or the Cassiopeia. I mean, I think, you know, you're playing a low econ jungler in the top lane, just looking to kind of survive and clear the wave. And getting the Drake a little later than I probably would have liked um, with how dominant their bot lane was. I'm just joshing, gonna get knocked back, gonna get stunned up and knocked up again. He's gonna be falling here, nothing you can really do to get away. Has the flash available, but Whopper's just gonna secure it anyways. Ooh, that Nara Go ahead. Nar. Everybody just wants to fight. Oh, I know. It's great. I'm actually doing It's a really hype game. You can really see that it's an all-out slugfest right now. And looking here, I think that NC State, they're going to be pumping everything on the Snar and making him split push because I'm just Josh and can't answer him right now. Uh, even with that much armor, you know, he's going to back here, have a completed Black Cleaver. They've now traded Tower on the bot for top. And we're actually seeing bot lane. They are swapping up to the top now. Um, but this is almost a good thing for, you know, NC State, as I think Whoppers is, is much stronger than I'm just joshing, comparatively how Bubba Hotep and Commissioner are into Robert and Twitch. Yeah, Gnar is ro uh, rotating towards the bottom lane now, however. So they're going to be a bit later to get to this top lane. Kark here as well, they might be looking for a dive setup. 
I'll have to see they are going for some vision to do so. And you do see Velkov's kind of backing off as well. Uh, you know, he does see that the Morgana did come down. Uh, you are seeing the pings come out. Does ping out the tri bush and ward that off. Up a Hotep, however, is taking this damage to half health already. And again, from Robert Cern, we see this Gwinzu's first build, which I find kind of questionable. Engage onto Dextamus, gonna use the Cataclysm to avoid the knockup there, but gonna get knocked up himself, is gonna secure the kill, but will be traded back by Pluck and Penguin. Pop-Tart gonna be trying to engage on him, gets knocked around. I'm not fully sure, because if you're, if you're the Zac, I don't know if you need to realistically fully charge that one. Uh, as you just really need him to stop damaging, you know, for the old damage to come through, but... Yeah does secure it with the final auto and they get the top lane turret as well working on this tier two now finding lands fermented soil as well bubba hotel good poke coming out from whoppers though really kiting this out really well with that extra damage it has the black cleaver completed now as well so he's going to be able to negate the damage from just joshing but with that binding on Braum, they might actually lose the the tier two here if they choose to continue pressuring it uh, they do back out not having vision on Zach, but so much just free damage coming out there from the able to out-rotate uh, and make the earlier play. Rift Herald is still up as well, so they might be looking for that potentially. We'll have to see as they are looking to clear this. Nara is going to look to back here. Uh, be interesting to kind of see if he decides to go for the Frozen Knots again or not. Uh, it was nerfed uh, fairly recently. So you see a lot of Nars will actually instead decide to go for uh, another second item or go into full tank there. Or, uh, you know, there's kind of like hasn't really been a decisive alternative for it yet. Yeah, he has picked up a longsword, however, and he just blew the TP top as well. They did manage to get out. Pop-Tart does seem to be caught. Fucking Penguin trying to get onto him, but the Phaedra are speeding him away. Doesn't use the flash just yet. We'll use it there. The Glacial Persian going to knock him up, however. Lifeform Disintegration Ray is going to pick him up. Hark, super low as well, and Robert Cern going to get that one himself. Oh, Caitlyn actually putting the damage on the Whoppers. And somehow they managed to make the failed TP play work, but this actually might be a problem, though. They're looking to dive. Bubba Hotup is going to get back with the 90 caliber net. Passive going to be popped on the Zac. I'm just joshing, trying to get away. Bubba Hotep going to secure that one kill and finding actually landing onto Robert Cern. He's extremely low. Twitch TV Cyber as well. Everybody has blinking health bars here. Finding's going to land and that's going to be the ace in the hole. Just about to secure the kill there. Knockup will get it from Cho'Gath. Commissioner is going to fall. Whopper's trying to trade back some damage and I'm just joshing. Trying to get away. Bubba Hotep extremely low as well. The boomerang going to secure it. Flash in to secure that other one from Dextamus as well. And they are just swinging for the fences here. Such a bloody game. Fight yeah, doesn't that fight over goes on yet. long enough, actually, for both Pop Tart and Kark to make it back. Both sides look to have such an advantage there for a second. With the beginning of the dive, you're thinking, awesome, NC State's going to have this one. Then the dive starts to go south, and you're like, oh, Auburn has this one. And then NC State turns it around again. My heart's hurting watching this one. I'm excited to see. Uh, what's to do? And they actually decide to close the gap there with that fight to only a 1k gold lead. Yeah, the scaling on their side as well, pretty good. However, you have that Caitlyn, Cassiopeia, and Cho'Gath on the other side. So you have to wonder, do you really want to take it to late game against those four, or three champions, rather? I think Park's going to come to how well they can play the map and utilize the, this 4 and one Nar right now. Uh, he's absolutely disgusting on how he's going to do this. Looks like he is going to be going... Stops the flag and drag with the knockup. Is going to be pulling him back in with the stretching strike. Cataclysm to lock up Robert Cern. Will be trying to get him, but Robert... Or, uh, Bubba Hotep taking a ton of damage from the lifeform. Disintegration rate must be at two health. Is going to be attempted to pick up for Puck and Penguin, but Robert Cern jumps in with the killer instinct. Going to be securing two for himself here. Getting a third, the triple kill for him. I'm just joshing on Dextam is extremely low. Pop-Tart, the only one left here is he gets picked up, and that's going to be the ace for NCS. Dextamus coming up huge there. Such a good pickup onto the Kate, knocking her down to, like, almost no health as well, allowing Penguin to come in and just clean up the back line there. 
And Pop Tart, not nearly as huge right now, not nearly as much damage coming out. He's on one item in a tier. Uh, such just, you know, really well played here to abuse the fact that they have a stronger spike than their opponents right now, especially on that Rage Blade spike. Uh, right now, I'd say Robert's stronger than the Caitlyn uh, if you can get into that extended fight to proc the full Rage Blade stacks. Yeah, able to use the. Oh, actually disconnects. Um, able to get multiple passes of the. Um, what is it? The uh, second skin. I wanted to say living skin for some reason. Second skin passive onto people. Mountain Dragon is up as well. We could see a fight for this one though, because both teams will take Baron incredibly quickly. Cyber uh, actually caught out. He's just dead. There's nothing that can be done about it. Just trying to buy some time, and that's probably going to be this Mountain Drake going over to Auburn. And no Glacial Fisher available to disrupt the fight. Might look to try and steal it, however. Ward over the wall is secured by Auburn, however. Oh, I did see Dexmas launching that Q, and I did get a little worried. We've seen a few sneaky W plays. We'll just see what's going to happen here, though. The gold lead actually going over in the favor of NC State for the first time in this game. Let's see what they can do with it. They're deciding to group here. Uh, interesting that they went for the Frozen Mount on the NAR build as well uh, when they're not trying to split with them. Uh, Does have a lot of health at least, so he's going to be hard for Baba Hotep to knock down until he gets a couple more items. I don't know. I think uh, now we see Zach going into this. He's going into uh, Warmogs right now. Uh, very good. We have seen though Zach does actually take a lot of damage though from Boba Hotep uh, because he does have so little armor. Uh, I'm interested to see if he's going to be able to, you know, really make use of this Warmogs or if it's just going to be a health item. Uh, um, so as you don't know, Warmogs actually will not proc off just Warmogs and Hulk anymore. Yeah, I was going to say that. I don't think Zach has enough health for it because it's 3K now as the. Um threshold for it i think when he hits 15 it will work which will be close-ish to when he's gonna be getting it i he know he's gonna uh, try and go in again not gonna get the knock up but the stretching strikes will pull them back gonna be using the let's bounce to pull in i'm just joshing he's gonna be knocked up again he's gonna be actually falling to robert cern another kill for him five two and three they're gonna be re-engaging pop tart flashing away robert cern with the killer instinct the petrifying gay is gonna lock up too however robert cern's gonna fall to tart they're trying to re-engage this fight. Two extremely low members. The Cataclysm is going to lock up Cyber, but Robert is going to get the kill onto him. And Bubba Hotep flashing forward might be a little bit too far. Going to get picked up. Passive popped on Zack and Pop-Tart extremely low as well. Is going to fall. Just about the ace there for NCS is going to be secured. Binding under the tower might actually return the kill onto Dextimus there. And that is going to be a really good binding there on that flash. Uh, and that probably actually just stopped the Baron, but they probably will still lose inhibitor for this. Yeah, potentially. It's still 10 seconds on Bubba Hotep, so I imagine they'll be able to keep it safe, but a huge team fight win for NCS again. So if you're, uh, you know, if you're Auburn right now, what do you think their way back to the game is right now? Honestly, it's just I think about killing both Robert and Dextimus. They only ever seem to be get on, be able to get onto one of them, if at all. Yeah, I do agree. Um, I, you just look at the front lines as well. Penguin is lasting in these fights so much longer than Kark or Joshing, who are just getting blown up so quickly, uh, even yeah. though they have you know more resistances. And I believe Chogath actually even has a higher health pool. Yeah, and I think some of that's based on Kark's build as well. He went for the Warriors first on his J4 gears. He was doing well, but now he's not the front line that they need because of it. I would really prefer to see him, especially with the Morgana support. Realistically, they, they only have a single tank until he gets to that three item power spike. Commissioner does get engaged on, gonna use the soul shackles, uses the broken, or the stopwatch, which is now broken. He's gonna be as well. So they he does could look get to, killed. And they could look to Baron off that as well, or at least do some kind of bait here. Cassiopeia is pushing up the mid lane right now. Could look to trade that turret though. Yeah, but look at how fast this Baron is falling, down to 6k already, down to half health. Kaisa and Velka is putting so much damage on it. Kark gonna try for a steal, does go in, doesn't actually get it. Robert Cern gonna pick it up himself, and two people just instantly murdered by the lifeform disintegration ray. I think that's a play you had to go to as Auburn. You do have Cho'Gath with Feast, uh, if, if you, you know, 
I think they maybe traded a little too long, but the communication was there to try to feast smite it. Uh, just a few seconds too late. A yeah, good attempt from both of them. I think if they'd come in from opposite sides of the pit, maybe they would have had a better chance, but both of them get CC'd up at the same time. Very sure they can do this right now. They do have a very strong split pusher in the 7 1 R. Going to full split push build here, too, with that Bork. Uh, we'll see. He's basically saying, I'm not going to need a team fight. And with this Baron buff, he's not necessarily wrong. Uh, most people I've seen who actually play the split pushing in the NAR build right now uh, mm -hmm. are actually. Taking half of Penguin's health there, but has the War Mogs now, which does seem to actually be working, so he's going to be healing a lot. Okay, so Zach does actually have a very high health growth. Um, so it's a little earlier than some other champions. I know Sejuani does not proc it until fairly late in the game. Yeah, and kind of uh, disappointing that it doesn't exist now, but the old runes where you could sort of tailor to something like that, where you'd get to the health per level runes, it's no longer a thing. So just based on your character growth now. I'll have to check it actually. He could be running the one that gives you uh, reduced damage in the early game, but an extra, I think it's 200 health. Uh, it's not um, much, but. That could be it. Because he is in the, the resolve tree, and that would explain why it's a little earlier than expected, uh, which actually is very good, I think, on the sack, as it does allow him a very strong mid game to do these fights and then kind of back out for a little bit and come back exactly. in very quickly. Yeah, able to get in there with the elastic slingshot and then back out with the let's bounce and he can just sit on the edge of the fight, heal up a little bit and then go back in once his cooldowns are off. Oh, this is looking so good for North Carolina here. Nar gonna have a fat wave, is gonna require people to defend this honor now. They're gonna wait for this next wave here and look for potential thing happening here as well. Because they're gonna be trading turrets for this no matter what. At least getting that final outer turret for themselves. Everybody seems to be rotating down, however, to cover this tier two. I don't know about leaving Kay alone in this wave. She's gonna have to move forward for this fight. Oh, the let's bounce gonna pull. I'm just joshing back in. So much damage onto him, instantly dropping Pop Tart, <coughs> trying to get away as well. Nars just pushing in the top lane currently, free firing on the Nexus, and they're not gonna be able to save this tier two either. They're just losing objectives across the map. And they're going to lose that turret as well, and probably the top in him. They are trying to respond to it now. Kark almost there. Whoppers does not have quite enough damage to secure it, but it's going to be close. He took that so fast on the back of that fight, and they're just going to be able to keep pressuring here as they do have a cannon mini wave here. And they all leave Whoppers again up in the top lane. He's just going to get that in him for free now as they try and respond to this. Pop Tart flashes away. Kark in deep in the back line, but going to get absolutely demolished. They're gonna trade the kill onto Pluck and Penguin at least, or at least as passive. Binding land, soul shackles as well from onto multiple people, but Commissioner drops before he actually gets it off, and Whopper is gonna pick up the kill onto Baba Hotop. This might be the game here, as they're looking for the kills, they're looking for the inhib, and that's an ace for North Carolina State. And I mean, that's really just showing what's gonna happen here. Uh, they came down from a 2k gold deficit back into a lead. Very strong showing here, 30 to 14. And I think we're in for a series as we're matching this up one to one. Oh, we'll I have think to see how Auburn responds to that. I think they could have easily won that game, but the builds that they went and how they approached that mid game kind of just ended up putting them further behind. And I think part of it also comes down to you you draft this hard losing lane on the top lane. Like there's really not much Shogat can do in Nar, especially if Nar decides to get, you know, anything really going on. Uh, you know, and, and Nar just decides to steamroll and take over the game pretty much by himself in that early, early game. I didn't even see it either, but he actually purchased a Bork for his Nar as his yeah. third item. Yeah, I was, I was talking a little bit when I was talking about when he was going full split push build, and uh, I mean, that's all he needed to do. Uh, it let him push down those turrets, and, and he was not getting focused in these fights, uh, so just having that damage onto the front line and being able to kite out Cho'Gath I don't think Cho'Gath got to land a single feast on a, on a carry for a kill after that first uh, first kill on two Whoppers. It is going to do it for game number two. NCS coming back with the victory. He's pushing us to four games in this series. We'll have to see how Auburn responds to that. We'll be back with game number three.